In my home country of the United Kingdom, a furor has developed over a proposal to use state lottery money to build a royal yacht. This important question has divided the nation, and whilst I won't be using this YouTube channel to enter the political debate, I will take a look at which builder is capable of embarking on such a project, who should design it, and above all, how much would it cost? For a nation that was once said to rule the waves, the United Kingdom doesn't have so many super yacht builders capable of constructing something big enough and splendid enough to be called a royal yacht. Devonport Yachts in Plymouth on the south coast of England hold the record for building the largest yacht ever constructed in the UK. The magnificent 96 metre, 315 foot long Vava 2. The company has since been bought by the Pendennis Shipyard not too far away in Falmouth, who have a wonderful heritage in yacht building and repair, with vessels such as the 55 metre, 180 foot yacht Steel to their credit. If a more military choice is opted for in the UK, BAE-owned Vickers Shipbuilding in Barrow in Furness also makes for an interesting solution. The shipbuilding industry in Barrow in Furness on the northwest coast of England has produced literally hundreds of significant ships and warships, including the HMS Invincible, Cunard's RMS Scythia, and the flagship of the Royal Navy, the HMS Bulwark. With the suggestion that Commonwealth countries should contribute to the cost of the yacht, it's appropriate to consider Australian builder Austal too. Austal is another serious player in the construction of military vessels. They certainly have the production capability, and they have dipped their toes in the water of super yachts already, with the release of vessels such as Australis, Tango, and Serenity. The question of who should design such a prestigious yacht is a difficult one to answer, since the British Commonwealth has such an abundance of yacht designers. Here are just three that spring to mind from the UK alone. Andrew Winch of Winch Design in London threw his hat in the ring back in 1997 with this magnificent initial rendering of what such a vessel could look like. He recently re-released the drawings in the light of renewed interest in the subject, and I should state very clearly that this is no pipe dream for Winch Design, with a list of super yachts to their credit that include Lawson's 85m Ace, 90m Phoenix 2 and Fedship's 99m Madame Goo, they are more than capable of executing a design that would be perfect for the purpose it's built for. Still in London, Johnny Horsfield of H2 Design has also made his mark on the world of super yacht design having designed such incredible yachts as Larson's 123-metre Project Jupiter, the Alephsif's Shipyard's 120-metre Mariah, and the interiors of the sensational 107-metre Ulysses, along with many other large projects. I don't know what Johnny Horsfield's personal opinions are about the monarchy, or indeed a royal yacht, but having met him a few times, I would love to see anything that he proposed for this project. Tim Haywood, on the other hand, another British yacht designer, has become a brand in his own right. This is the man that designed the famous 115-metre Lawson Pelorus, an icon in yacht design. The 90-metre Ice, and of course, Cush Yacht's magnificent 133-metre Al Mekab. This designer does very little self-promotion indeed, letting his designs speak for themselves and benefiting from an outstanding reputation and network of contacts. In 1997, when the former Royal Yacht Britannia was decommissioned, this proposed design emerged in the press. A smaller, uglier version of the original, it was estimated to cost about £60 million to build at the time. Coincidentally, this is about the same amount of money that was thought to be saved by decommissioning the larger, more stately and already functional Britannia, begging the question as to why anybody would possibly think it could be a good idea to build a new one back then. The only credible proposal on the table at the moment for a royal yacht is, without a doubt, Andrew Winch's design. 
I've seen the figure of 100 million pounds bandied about by the press when they discuss this design, which quite frankly is ridiculous and an indication of how little you can really trust what you read in the tabloids. At 150 meters in length, with a very imposing superstructure, this mega yacht has a lot of interior volume and it should be remembered that the price of a custom yacht is far more dependent on the interior volume than just the length. An idea of the volume is often expressed in gross registered tons, so let's take an example of a similar size yacht, Dilbar, that is 156 meters in length and also with plenty of interior volume. This yacht is almost 16,000 gross tons and rumors have it that the cost was close to 1 billion euro. Now, of course, the winch designed Royal Yacht is a little smaller. The rumors of the cost of Dilbar may be exaggerated and costs can be contained a lot at design stage. But in my opinion, and with the benefit of a lot of experience in the industry, I would say that a winch designed Royal Yacht would almost certainly cost at the very least 500 million pounds. Having said that I will stay out of the political debates, I do have one comment to make. It's very easy to think that 500 million pounds or more of taxpayers' money spent on building a royal yacht is just an expensive way of sending the royal family on holiday. However, the subject is a little more complex than that. Proponents of the royal yacht claim that it would bring in billions and billions of pounds of trade back into the country. And as a matter of fact, there are yacht owners out there who do use their yacht extensively to have high level business meetings. And some of them may even claim that in a certain sense, the yacht has paid for itself. However, my opinion is different to that. I see a 500, 600, 700 million pound yacht as a way to take taxpayers' money and reinvest it right back into the British economy not just for work for ship builders or yacht builders, but also for the designers, the engineers, suppliers of electrical and mechanical equipment, and it would keep them employed for years to come. The UK has a very solid reputation for relatively small production yachts, such as Sunseeker, Princess and Fairline, but by building a royal yacht, they could potentially get a slice of that market of mega yachts, such as 60, 70, 80, 100 metre plus yachts, and that could only be a good thing. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this subject. I'm sure not everybody agrees with me, so please do feel free to leave your comments in the section below.